If you're just getting into self-hosting and you're wondering, well, what's everyone else kind of doing in their labs and how are they setting things up? Last month's self-host survey that came out for 2025 is a really good indication of uh, what people are using. And predominantly, it's for personal use for one to two users. So four numbers, they surveyed around 4,000 people and it was 20 to 50 year old males who were in the tech field and are generally educated. So that's the survey responders. Most people are doing it for a hobby and privacy reasons. I think hobby and privacy is kind of joined together. And I think cost and convenience and education are also joined together as well. So, but while you can set up your home lab cheaply, ongoing costs can be a lot and convenience. I don't know about that. Um, what I found interesting was most people are using consumer hardware and low powered devices. Low powered devices are going to be things like Raspberry Pi, which make perfect sense. Most people, and you'll see a little later, most people are running Home Assistant and that runs on a Pi perfectly. And then I think consumer hardware is going to be people putting in things like a little Dell Optiplex or the Lenovo, the microservices, because you see a lot of people running uh, Proxmox, which is you know being, going to be in a, in a cluster. Of course, everyone is running a NAS. Most people, you know, they don't avoid putting on sensitive information onto their home NAS. I think, yeah, that's where you would put it. As far as operating systems going, Linux is, of course, the GOAT. Proxmox, this, I think, matches with people using those clusters, the, the Optiplex clusters. Home Assistant, of course, that makes perfect sense, as, as we saw, because most people are using... Uh, um, Raspberry Pis. I would have, like TrueNAS and Unraid, they are pretty much the same thing. Unraid, apart from being paid, manages drives of different sizes better that TrueNAS doesn't. So I think that's why it's got a lot of uh, users, why I use it. Um, if TrueNAS did have that same support, so I could put in a four terabyte and a 10 terabyte drive and it will run everything and it won't sort of cap it down at the four terabyte, I think you would see those 400 people move over to TrueNAS pretty quickly. As far as backing up, everyone's doing it on site. So whether you are doing your desktop, your computers, backups onto the, onto your one NAS, or you're doing a secondary NAS from everything, it's pretty much on site. Cloud, which is a good thing to do, choosing Backblaze. I did a video a little while ago on, on programmatic cloud storage services and Backblaze was hands down the best value for money you can get. Obviously supported by everyone else who's using Backblaze. Most people are using containers, uh, especially things like Docker. Not a lot of people are using Kubernetes. I think Kubernetes is just going to be a little bit more enterprise than Home Lab. Feel free to prove me wrong. As you can see, yeah, Portana, Dockage, that's where most of the management platforms are being used. It's nice to see Coolify in there. I did a video recently on self-hosting uh, web services with Coolify. Fantastic service. I really, you should take a look. Update methodology. I think the fact that most people are doing manual uh, with a little bit of automatic, but mostly manual makes perfect sense. Uh, I had a look recently at a, a new service called NoBGP. It is a, a network tool that you can deploy onto all of your services. Then you can connect it to Claude or ChatGPT and have it execute stuff on those nodes, such as updating all of the libraries on those nodes. If you haven't seen no, no BGP, it's absolutely worth having a look. I think it's great that uh, most people are ignoring their ISP firewalling and doing their own firewalls. I wouldn't trust my ISP firewalls as far as I could throw it. Everyone's using a VPN or a reverse proxy. Great stuff. I'm surprised to see how many people are forwarding ports, but I would say most professionals are comfortable forwarding a port. And that kind of makes sense when the volume of um, Nginx and traffic and caddy here. So most people are sort of technically inclined to be able to manage these things. I'm personally a Cloudflare Tunnels user. I am in the process of migrating away from Cloudflare Tunnels to Pangolin. Once I find a, um, a low cost, high bandwidth VPS provider in my area, so it's got a low ping. I'll set up a Pangolin instance as well as a VPN on that service so I can do build my own tunnels from my own VPS to services, but I'm also looking to put a lot of the home network on a uh, on a VPS from the gateway as well. As far as domains, I mean, having a custom domain makes perfect sense these days and Cloudflare being the biggest provider, they are the cheapest. They don't charge any additional cost when you buy a de domain. It's just the registration fee. Um, Namecheap was what I was using and I've been migrating across to Cloudflare recently for domain name and just DNS management of domains and then everything else. 
Um, I got asked recently if I was self-hosting my own email. I wouldn't do that. It's incredibly complex. And I think the fact that a huge volume of these respondents, you know, well, 80 something percent uh, said, no, they don't self-host their own email. It's it's way too complex. Don't even try. Unless you're a professional, then yeah, give it a go and let me know how you go. Most people running databases are in a container. Again, we're probably looking at things like Docker. As far as media streaming goes, Jellyfin and Plex, of course, Jellyfin taking the lead, I would say because it's free, not because it's easier to use. And then Audio Bookshelf, I did a video on that, I think, yesterday as well. Cody and MB, a little bit more difficult to use, but it's interesting to see that people are still there. But most people are going to be moving to Jellyfin, I think. As far as file storage, Nextcloud is number one. I think it's probably because you've got a lot of functionality in Nextcloud. I find it a little clunky. I prefer C file over Nextcloud. That's a personal choice. OwnCloud and Nextcloud are very, very, very similar. And I think the fact that sync thing is showing up here is probably because in the note taking, you see Obsidian has got a lot of users and Obsidian doesn't sync unless you're using sync thing. So I think that's possibly why this is coming up. I've not done a lot with hosted authentication and it's kind of, there's not a lot of people using it. It's good to see the Pangolin's also up here. Um, Cloudflare should also probably be in here as well. Um, but Othelia, I think is a legacy platform. So it's probably people who've used it and just they're still using it because it's a legacy platform. And as I was saying uh, in the note taking Obsidian, most people are using it. It's fine. Bit of a um, learning curve and it has limitations. Whereas Nextcloud Notes, that number is probably because of the next people who are hosting Nextcloud. And then you've got Joplin, which I haven't done a video about, but I should. Memos. I think Memos is great. Super fast, super simple to run and syncs as well. Affine also really, really good, really uh, full featured um, and a lot easier uh, to use, I think, than Nextcloud and it syncs as well. A lot of people are doing home automation. I do home automation and this probably would link to why there's a lot of people using uh, single board computers. Things like Home Assistant, as you can see, yeah, Home Assistant and the favorite software, which we'll get to in a sec, but Home Assistant is number one, links to a lot of people doing home, home automation, which links to a lot of people using a single board computer. And if you're running game servers, then it's Minecraft pretty much. For the finale, what's everyone's favorite software? Home Assistant, of course, Jellyfin, Plex, Image if you want to get rid of Google Photos, Vault Warden if you're using any sort of password protection and you want to do a local backup of it, Vault Warden is absolutely essential. Nextcloud, all of those file management and office replacements, you get that in Nextcloud. R stack, Sonar Radar. I'm surprised N8N didn't make a bigger number. That is a no code, no code platform. For instance, I run Home Assistant and N8N. N8N will query my server for the current temperatures of the hard drives. So I live in a hot location. Uh, my drives run hot. Every 10, 20 minutes, it'll poll what are the temperatures. And if any of the drives are over a certain temperature, it'll then use Home Assistant to turn on the air conditioner in the room until those drives come all the way down to a certain temperature again. And then it will turn the air conditioner off. This saves a ton of money and it keeps everything running really quite pristine. So really good if you're going to have high load times and then you're turning everything off at night, then it does. It can just sit in the background. So yeah, really interesting. I think it aligns very, very similar to, to sort of my own personal use and what I see from a lot of the comments and followers as well. i would be interesting to see as the price of things goes up over the next year, subscriptions, but also RAM and GPUs. And I think it'd be interesting to see AI probably make a lot more impact on, the, on next year's survey.